Okay, so we're getting close to the end and getting ready for deliverable. We've got our LES that's been aligned, debiased, smooth. We've classified ground. We have classified out our thinned points. And now we say we're done. No, that is not right. Remember what I said, that the thinned layers lose fidelity. So here we're looking at, on my screen, the 10 of all of our ground system points. So you see this curve line nice and clean. <clears throat> now, in the previous video, I had thinned that to 10, and it was very, uh, very little, so I went ahead and thinned it again down to 5. So now let me flip it over to our thin filtered, and look how much of that detail we lose in that fidelity. Now, depending on your project, is what level of fidelity you need and uh, where your project area is. Uh, if this was a drainage ditch, it might jump right across it. So it's up to you to decide how much fidelity you want to enforce. So what we're going to do is enforce this with brake lines. And two, a couple of things that we need to understand about brake lines. Let me switch this to uh, points and let's zoom in in here so we lost a bunch of detail here along that because uh, of the gray and it didn't think it was ground but when I switch it back to terrain you can still see this right here pretty well if I cut a small profile across this area And zoom out you can you can see the curb it going up the curb <clears throat> and up here is the top so you you can see these areas here and this is only six inches of rise across this whole this graticals right here so here's our edge of pavement and here's our top and you got a few points that were creeping up it but they're within a tenth or so so we're not going to worry about it now if I change this to just thinning, there's nothing in that view. So let's turn it back to points rather than terrain. You've got a point way over here and a point way over here and here and here and that curve line is somewhere in here. And that's why we lose that definition. So <clears throat> how do we fix that? We're going to fix it with brake lines. Well, things that you need to understand about brake lines, let's turn on all points and let's change our rendering mode to RGB. If I zoom out, it makes it a little easier to see. So here's our curve line right through here. You can see it a bit better with RGB. Where we have a brake line, there is a chance for points to be to the left and to the right of it and directly on top of it. Where depending how often you click is how many vertices are along the line. So if I were to if I had drawn the brake line vertices somewhere right in here where my cursor is in the profile view and there was a point immediately to the right of it that was a different elevation it creates a it creates these small near vertical triangles. So what we're going to want to do is create our brake lines and we're also going to want to buffer points out so that we can help avoid those vertical points. And that's going to be taken care of in a couple of steps. Let me close this profile view here. And we're going to first start by drafting um, some brake lines. I'm going to draft one and then we'll um, look at the rest of the steps. So. This can be, let me switch this back to ground, I just saw that car. And in this case we're going to be drafting, we want all the ground. So we're going to try to snap along these ground lines here, okay? And let me find one. Let's do this edge of pavement, running down this. So what we're going to do is utilize features. So up, he, up here on your toolbar, there should be a LPC 360 feature editing toolbar. It's the one we will be using. If it's not on, you go to view and turn it on. 
and things that we want to make sure is um, we are going to have to choose a layer now if we don't have a layer we're going to make one and I'm going to choose this button right here that's create a feature layer give it the shape path so um, notice that this dialog box doesn't pop up like at our IO so we can come in here um, we're going to do north and I'm going to make a break lines folder in here and I'm going to call it Agricola North break lines and save that's the layer, it's geometry type, it can be anything you want it to be, polygons, 2D, 3D, in our case it'll always be 3D, and I'm going to do polyline. Now if you were doing a bunch of stuff for lakes or something, you could uh, make a separate layer for those and make them polygons. I'm just going to, I'm going to leave the enable M values off and I'm going to hit OK. And now you'll see that this layer is in here. Now that it's made, and it is selected right here I can go and start creating features it's just this easy so but but before I do that <clears throat> let me get out of the command notice that there is no way for you to know how often you're clicking one of the downsides of digitizing data when we have this much data we have five million four million points you will get sucked into the trap of trying to click exactly on every dot and you will be so zoomed in you won't be able to tell how often apart you are keep in mind that ground typical ground survey is 50 feet we have decimated and thinned this one down to every five feet so anywhere in between those two is more than enough for vertices I remember the layer that we had in our earlier steps that created the grid I went ahead and brought that back in or created one for my thin grid and here is me a grid at every five feet it, I will use it as uh, uh, a common sense check of where to click so I might do let's say I want to click every 10 feet since that's two or three feet let's do every 15 feet so every three grid squares so I'm going to just begin editing getting this general area for the purposes of what we're doing let me turn off these contours give me a little less to look at and I'm just going to start clicking so every three ish and then you can put as many or as few as you want as you're going around curves keeping in mind that this is copious more information than you would have had from a ground survey so I'm going to hit a uh, space uh, right click excuse me and finish my edits so that it draws that in and um, notice that it immediately took that data out yours will not do that so before I drew that I should have told you one other thing uh, on your feature editing toolbar you want to ensure that this Z is on and it is enabled to auto Z the surface so if I come right here choose this selector and select this feature and I right click and go to feature analyst and go to vertices it didn't select it let's try it again and go to vertices I can see here that I have actual Z's and they're not all the same so this is how you quickly make sure that you're um, actually getting real information and if you click and you miss an elevate miss you might actually click but there's no points you'll see a, a false um, elevation in here so notice that mine went ahead and immediately buffered that out let me show you how we did that we're going to our point cloud task and we're going to create a new point cloud task hit add and in this case we want to choose a macro and let's give it a name that's something like something that has buffer in it and then I would uh, just leave it at buffer and hit OK 
I'm going to hit cancel because I've already got one made. <clears throat> in here, in your buffer, you want to go down your input data set and choose the feature geometry you want this macro to run. So this is going to be a buffer, or in my case, around all of my break lines, no matter what they are. You can, this can be as simple or as complex as you need it to be. Different buffers for different types of feature layers and, and stuff like that. In my case, I'm keeping it simple and having it just break lines. So our input geometry, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say shape files and I'm going to choose the Agricola North break lines and close. The input LAS layer is going to be all of my reserved key points because that's ultimately what we're making the surface from. Keep that in mind. And uh, down here under data types, we're going to choose within a distance of one foot. In my case, you can change this to two, three, a half, and set the destination class to the number 12. This is the USGS uh, preferred um, layer for what they call buffer points, points that are within a, a certain distance of break lines. And hit apply. With that in running, it will automatically classify this data out. So if I, that's just ground, if I go to thinned, you'll see that there is nothing there. Now, <clears throat> let me turn on the tin and turn this back to elevation. Let me zoom in here. Now, we've got brake lines we've got them at elevation and we buffered it well how do we get the brake lines to be seen for the surface well that's not too difficult we're going to come up here and we're going to control and left click on the contours and notice that we have our brake lines right here we're going to use brake line enforcement and we're going to scroll down and find the uh, shape file that represents our brake lines and uh, leave it on shape for the elevation and and that's about it and let's hit apply and OK and close it and now it will begin enforcing your brake lines so if I turn on the contours now you will see you can kind of see that kick right there along this edge of pavement Let's do one more, a, a short one, through around this curve. So let's go back to all of our ground system. And let's start digitizing a new one. So let's create a new, let's make sure my, see it got turned off. I'm going to turn it back on. And I'm using my debiased. And I've got ground system on. So let's create a new feature. And let's just uh, go around this real fast double click end it and it automatically buffered them out and you can see I automatically added it to the surface you should be able to see that line right there now and this is a time-consuming monotonous task so you will spend as much time or more time doing brake lines so keep that in mind that you are only trying to draw what is important for your project and keep in mind that you're going that you have it thinned out as well.